Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Cliff Notes for the final lecture, uh, the lecture on the future of corrections. Uh, please keep in mind uh, that um, basically we have this one set of lecture and discussions for this week. Everything's due uh, this week on May 1st. The following week, I'm just having you guys focus on the criminal profile paper. No lecture. I just want you to focus on the paper itself. Uh, and um, I put up directions for the paper in the form of PowerPoint slides underneath the lecture for this week. Uh, I think I'm going to have to set, somehow I'm going to have to set up a separate portal, uh, even though I've run out of portal. Moodle only allows me 15, and I've kind of used them already, so I think I might lump it together uh, with, the, um, with the final exam. So the paper itself is due on May 8th, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the exam will be due on Friday the 15th. Uh, so for this week, uh, the focus is on the future of corrections. In other words, what are the concerns going forward? Uh, first of all, is, is about overcrowding. Um, not a huge problem in New York State, uh, but a problem, in, especially in places like California, Florida, and Texas, where they operate at like 170% capacity, meaning if there's 100 beds and they have 170 prisoners, they have to find a way to... to find a place to put those prisoners. Usually that's in bunk beds and whatnot. Um, secondly is recidivism. Recidivism is a big concern uh, because, you know, as, as is on that first slide, um, prison could be deemed a training ground for criminals. Uh, and so as a result of that, you know, 80% of all men recidivate. And if you don't know what recidivism means by now, recidivism by very strict definition just means a return to criminal activity and in order to recidivate it four things have to happen first of all uh, you have to commit a crime you have to go to prison for that crime you have to finish your prison sentence and come back to the community and then once you come back come back to the community you commit a new crime so that's recidivism uh, is that return to criminal activity af after already being punished this is a concern so also mentioned on that first slide is the term prisoner re-entry. Prisoner re-entry is, uh, don't get it confused because I know some people look at it and they think, it, oh, that's when you return to prison. No, prisoner re-entry is a term to describe when a person comes from prison and returns or re-enters the community, re-enters society. Um, how will people adjust? If you look at the video from a couple weeks ago on Otis Johnson, um, that is like extreme prisoner re-entry where he wasn't even familiar with all the stuff that was going on. He wasn't even familiar with cell phones uh, as he was coming back into society. So that is, that is a major concern. Um, and then uh, also mentioned in this lecture is the concept of the parallel universe. I know it sounds like a really trippy kind of concept, but the idea is that like, what if we were to create... Um, an intermediate step before people get back to society. So you have like a 10 year prison sentence and in that 10th year you get to move to this little small town that's still on prison grounds and you get to practice, simulate real life. So what I'm asking you guys in the discussion is like how far should you go in that simulation? You know the obvious ones are like you'll have your own apartment, you have to wake up on your own now, you have to go to a job on your own now, you have to feed yourself now. Those are the easy ones but there's also quite a few other things that prisoners have to deal with when they return. So would you have that parallel universe be co-ed with both male and female? Mm -hmm. Is that a good idea? Uh, should you have uh, bars, restaurants, and liquor stores in this parallel universe? They're in the real world. So in that discussion, I kind of want you to tell me like what should be there and what shouldn't be there. That's, that's up to you. Um, the case study for this week focuses a little bit on the future of corrections and the future of crowding and whatnot uh, by talking about certain crimes that could be decriminalized or certain crimes that we could uncrowd our prison system with by doing treatment rather than punishment. So sex work, um, sex work and prostitution, drug use, uh, certain types of drugs, uh, etc. So it's up to you to decide which uh, you think could be decriminalized a little bit in order to ease up on our on our prison system as a whole. Um, also, again, the directions are up for the criminal profile paper. 
criminal profile paper uh, easiest way to write it three sections three headings make it easy on you make it easy on me uh, and I want you to pick somebody who is real pick a real criminal do not do a paper on the Joker do not do a topic like I'm doing my paper on tax evasion or I'm doing my paper on rape. No, the purpose of this paper is to focus on a who, on a person or persons or government, fine. Uh, but uh, it's, it's important to be able to identify somebody uh, because for the first section, this is, I expect citation uh, throughout. First section is about the crime. Um, research section. Second section is about the background of the offender. This is why you have to know the person. Uh, so I want you to focus on their childhood, focus on their mental health history, their schooling history, their parenting, their neighborhood. What are the things that influence them uh, to commit the crimes that they've had? That background section, also citation, etc., feeds the third section, your own prognosis of why the criminal turned out the way that they did. And, um, you know, A plus papers for those who bring in some theories from the biological perspective, psychological perspectives, or social perspectives on criminal behavior. Um, if you bring in some of those theories into that third section, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to explain the person's criminal behavior. Uh, otherwise, again, next week, just want you to dedicate yourselves to that paper. Hand it to me on May 8th, or you know, upload it on May 8th. Uh, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the exam, I think I'm going to, forgive me that I don't know the dates off the top of my head, but I think I'm going to make it available on May 13th and it will be due back to me on the 15th. So, um, otherwise, uh, let's finish out the semester. Let's, let's get this done and um, I, I'll field any questions that you guys have. So, until then, take care.